What is today? Uh, 17. 17. Sacred, by definition, means connected to God. I tell people all the time that hunting is sacred to me, and until now, I have never looked up the definition. Fitting, actually. I'm going to go on record and just say it one more time. Everything about hunting is sacred to me, from the where to the what, and most important, with whom. Now, some of you may remember four years ago, Uncle Bud hunted elk in the rut on the famous Tejon Ranch. That experience and that memory that we relive over and over in film is sacred. With one tag available and room in the freezer, Uncle Bud is back on the Tejon during the late season in search of another great experience. On the first morning of the hunt, guide Stephen Ryan walks us right through the fog and right onto some younger six-point bulls. Anticipating a break in the weather and in search of a much older class bull, we keep moving. For two straight days, the weather never changed. We had severe fog, low visibility, and super slick mountain roads, which limited where we could go and what we could do. Willing the fog to go away, Stephen spots a bull up on a hill, and as we get out to take a better look, we are met with bugles, cracking antlers, and elk in full rut. Picking over the canyon at 70 power, Stephen finds a bull affectionately known as the Beast. Completely unattainable at this point in time, the Beast never left the back of our minds. Up with the elk red in December and <laughs> on the Tone Ranch. What's the story? <laughs> Not much of a story other than <laughs> they're losing their brain out there. He's getting ready to come out. Here he comes. Here he comes. Making the best of a low visibility situation on the ranch, enjoying some wildlife. We got clear forecast for the following day, and we're all excited. What's the plan? Uh, <laughs> good morning. Hello. Nice. I think it's the first day we can see. Oh, no. <laughs> On our last day of hunting, the weather was beautiful. We enjoyed getting around and looking over a lot of animals, and when we pulled in and got close, we were just covered up with broken bulls, or bulls that were outside the criteria or just under age. And it was a bit frustrating because time was running thin and we hadn't punched that tag. Let's be honest, there are things that are out of our control. So if you just enjoy that moment, it'll happen when it's supposed to. The end of the hunt was bittersweet. We scheduled a return trip at the end of the month, and although Stephen couldn't be there with us due to scheduling conflicts, the entire Tahoe Ranch team operates as one, and he'd be there in spirit. 
With two days left in the season, Bud and I find ourselves back up on the Tejon Ranch with our guide Cody Plank working through some slick roads looking for an old mature bull. Oftentimes, the mountain decides where you're going to hunt. Because things were so slick, we wound up in a valley just on the other side of where Stephen had spotted the beast. With all of us glassing from a high point, we hear Cody say, There's a bull. At over a thousand yards stood the most massive bull I have ever seen in person. While we get a little film with this bull, let me explain why we didn't just run in and try and harvest him right here. First things first, I'd like to clear the air about the Tejon Ranch being a high fence operation. I've heard this rumor my whole life. That is completely untrue, and I'll give you a few fun facts about the ranch. The Tejon Ranch is 422 square miles large, over 270,000 acres of pristine private lands. The ranch has no high fences that contain any elk. They can come and go when they please, and they act and operate exactly like they are, wild, free-range, gigantic bulls in some of the most rugged country you have ever been in. And yes, it is one hour from downtown Los Angeles. These bulls get so big because they have all the feed, all the genetics, all the water, and no winter. Most importantly, they only harvest a handful of bulls and they let them get to the right age class. This bull is the perfect fit, exactly what we're looking for. We just have to find a way to get in there with the wind right. We're going to get one chance or we're going to push him out of the country. It is hard not to love being around those gigantic bulls. We finished out our day just having a fantastic time. Great bulls, great weather, and an optimistic plan for tomorrow. The next morning after a hard freeze, we find ourselves checking some cameras and a few water sources and seeing if we can see if elk had been in this general area. Like any Tejon Ranch guide, Cody's got us back on bulls first thing in the morning and we're just taking inventory trying to find that perfect bull. Oh, hunting. <laughs> Another look at some of these fantastic animals that live on the Tejon Ranch. Utilizing every resource with one evening left to hunt, we all wind up in the truck with co-guide Cody Luji, and we travel around the rim glassing and looking for some bulls that Cody had seen in some thick brush. Unable to find the ones we were looking for, we stumbled onto this beautiful young 6x7 out feeding with his cows, and we stopped and closed out the night with some beautiful footage. We got a couple hours to go. <laughs> go hunting. Go hunting. We got a pile of bulls. On our last morning, we had less than four hours before we needed to start heading home to celebrate the new year with family. We were all feeling a bit under the weather, and I believe it was emotion and stress, that dreaded knowing you're running out of time feeling. Cody had spotted 12 bulls way off the canyon rim, way down in the bottom, and if we committed and headed down there, had we found the right bull, it would have taken all day. Frustrated and not seeing what we're looking for, the entire team moved and started glassing into the canyon where we had seen him last. Like a sigh of relief, everyone heard Cody Plank say, I got some cows. With a small gap in weather, Mike and Cody stayed and kept their eyes on those cows. Cody, Bud, and I worked up the rim and started to come down on their location. 20 minutes later, with all the stars in line, we found ourselves at 140 yards, and the rest is in the history books. The definition of emotional roller coaster. 
from the very, very bottom to the very, very top in about six seconds. OMG, Bud just got it done. Let's go see. Don't let it bite you. Look at the mass on that son of a gun. Oh my God. Oh my. Wow, how quick that's over. I'm sure glad we ate elk last night. <laughs> when you're filling the freezer, this is a big old bowl. Uncle Bud, congrats. Thank you guys so much. A wild three days, huh? That is a monster. He's a monster. Unreal. You don't realize till you walk up to him. Mm -hmm. Just don't. I bet that bull go 230 pounds, bud. I'll bet it does too. Outweighs me by. I'm no, outweigh ground, it by two and a half pounds. Ground gainage is the best. <laughs> ground gainage. Yeah. I know we're all about tired of the fog, man, but to be honest, to look at it right now, it's pretty majestic. The, yeah. the, the three first days, the follow-up trip, the fact yeah. that we forced it. Mike pushed us hard to get back up here. It's just the whole story is fantastic. And it really is. Here we lay the beast. Damn. He didn't go very far, Cody. What are you saying? For, did he go 40 yards? Or less. <laughs> uh, the kill shot is, is epic. I know it's not about the kill shot, but you can't make it any more ethical. And uh, all right, congrats. Let's cut him up and eat him. I'm ready for that. Right on. Thanks again, guys. Collectively, we whittled on that bull. Five guys and three trips later, we got the entire elk out. Rarely am I lost for words, but looking back now after telling the story, I don't think there's much more to say. If you would, please remove your hat. I'd like to close in prayer. Lord, thank you for elk. Thank you for the Tejon Ranch. Thank you for friends and family and the inseparable bond created around this outdoor lifestyle we live. Lord, thank you for the Uncle Buds of the world. Without even knowing, they mentor and teach others through actions, positive attitudes, and beliefs. Lord, I pray we reach others and tell the right message about hunting through these films. And in your name we pray. Amen.